Hi, welcome to the Catholic Corner. I'm Monsignor Walter Nolan. We're on location here at St. Paul's Catholic Church in Princeton, New Jersey. And if you followed us a little bit, uh, we had a wonderful, wonderful interview with Father Richard Raw. And we're going to continue that conversation because he's such a beautiful man of God and a great man of faith and spirituality and a man that he's touched so, so many lives that he probably couldn't count them all. And he's uh, too humble anyway to go count them all. But, uh, <laughs> but Father, Father Richard is a, uh, is a, a great speaker and a, a man of, of, as I said, his, his love and faith. He's a Fran Franciscan priest of the New Mexico province. Uh, and he actually right now heads up a uh, Center for Action and Contemplation in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, does wonderful, wonderful work. He's written, as I mentioned uh, the last time, many, many books and uh, gives talks and CDs, DVDs. The last time we spoke about male spirituality, I happened to uh, listen to Father Rohr give a presentation on the cosmic Christ. And that's always been an interest of mine and to see how this, this, this Christ of ours, this Christmas of ours really can touch our lives. So I had asked him if he would share some of his thoughts and he was willing to, to do that. Father Richard, thanks again for being with us and giving us your time. I know you're such that's a very, very busy happy, man. Happy, happy to be here. The cosmic Christ, <laughs> that's, that's a, a, it's, 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 a, it's a great understanding, I think. If only we could only grasp it fully, yeah. and maybe we, maybe we never yeah. will. Yeah. But, um, uh, but it really is the, the, the Christ, I guess, uh, beyond, I guess I'd say beyond Christianity. And we, we know how Paul writes so well, and, and in Colossians, uh, that uh, in the end there is only the Christ uh, in everything, and that with grace from the beginning until now, everything is groaning in the act of giving birth. You know, there are so many beautiful expressions out of Paul and John and, mm -hmm. and to understand. But I, I don't know, and help me now and help us. I don't know if, mm -hmm. uh, if, if that's even a concept that lots of people have or, or do we ever even begin to understand it a little bit? You know, let me try to lay the foundation in this way. that In the first 2,000 years, uh, largely we fell in love with Jesus and we're grateful for that. Sure. We met Jesus. But in fact... We believe in Jesus Christ. Now, this will be a new way of thinking, but Jesus and Christ uh, came together in the one person of Jesus. But we make two different affirmations. I, Jesus has existed for 2,000 years. The Christ, and this is very clear, I know if I say it without quoting scriptures, people are going to think I'm making this up, but the prologue to John's Gospel, the hymn at the beginning of Colossians, the hymn at the beginning of Ephesians, the first chapter of John's first letter. They can check it out, all right? They all say without any, you know, hesitation, the Christ existed from all eternity, all right? And, and we just were never taught to think that way, that Christ is not Jesus' last name, all right? Jesus became the Christ. So this, of course, gives us our foundation for interfaith dialogue, for the understanding that God has been working in all of history since the beginning of time. To put it very concretely, the Christ is born the moment God decides to show Himself, the moment God decides to materialize. Now, modern science would call that the Big Bang. Right? <laughs> the Big Bang is the birth of the Christ, 14.5 billion years ago. And this material manifestation has been revealing the glory of God, the nature of God, for at least 14.5 billion years. That's the cosmic Christ. So in a moment of time, this cosmic Christ is revealed for us in a human person that we could see and touch and hear and listen to and fall in love with. But in the first 2,000 years, most of the work except for the mystics who largely got this. You know, mainline Christianity, Catholic and Protestant, has largely been concerned about Jesus the historical person, which is good. But what we missed out on was the cosmic Christ, which would have given us a much more uh, immense understanding of salvation, of how God is revealing and loving through everything that is, through creation. And salvation isn't just a human concept, it's a historical concept. It's a global concept. God is liberating and loving through everything that God created. 
Could that be because for so long a time we've looked at creation, even biblically, I think I can say, that it was whatever you want to say, seven days, and yeah. there, there, maybe it happened right. 5,000 years before Christ was born, Jesus was born, and, and not to see this, this billions of years that, oh. that, that we're understanding now to a, to a much greater degree. I don't know if that had anything to do with our, our not going all the way back into that understanding of the cosmic Christ. Yeah, of course, if we would have even read the seven days of creation, we see that each day is another one of the parts of creation. It's not just God creating human beings. And we thought we were the only creation of God that God took seriously. Well, as you know, I'm a Franciscan. My father, St. Francis, Call the creatures, brother and sister, even the elements, uh, you know, the wind and the fire and the brother, sun, sister, moon, all of it deserved a, a subjective name, brother, sister, almost a, a character of equality to it. Because the height of Christian seeing is to see God in everything. <laughs> and when you don't see God in everything, you end up seeing God in nothing. And that's been our problem. We can't even see God in, in people who are not Christians or even people who are not our denomination, or, which isn't very good seeing. It, it means that we're not going to get very far. Well, then I guess uh, <laughs> you separate nature and what word are you, super nature? Uh, yeah. but, but, you know, if, if, as, you, as you're talking, when I listen to your talk at that presentation that I happen to be at, to, to realize more and more that, you know, it's all... Super nature, That's so right. to speak. Yeah. There's no such thing as merely natural. <laughs> That's the meaning of the incarnation, right. that the physical world is, yes, the hiding place of God, but the revelation place of God. It's only hidden for those who don't know how to see. So there is nothing natural for those who've learned how to see. Everything is supernatural. But Everything. Could, can yeah. we take from that, you know, as, as you said, that in a period of time, the revelation of, of, of a Christness in, in, in the humanness of Jesus, can we take from that then, if we, if we understand that and apply it to ourselves, all of the, I don't know what to say, thousands of, of uh, uh, incarnations of our own lives. In other words, the, the, the growth, the forgiveness, the kindness, the hugs, the kisses, that are all now little little mirror images of the incarnation, which is the mirror image of the cosmic Christ. You know That's what I'm lovely. trying to feel? That's lovely. You know? Whenever we're moving toward connection, communion, this, uh, this uh, one author calls it cosmic allurement, that everything in creation admires it, itself in, in the mirrors that are all around it. Uh, and so you're absolutely right. Whenever you allow that allurement to happen and, and you build bonds and bridges instead of boundaries, you are furthering the second coming of Christ. You are building up the body of Christ. Whenever you separate, hate, fear, deny, uh, enclose yourself in a little self-pitying corner, you're, you're actually backtracking on the glory of God. You're not building the mystery or, or, or revealing the mystery. You're in fact denying the mystery. You know, I had a thought that I was, uh, I'd love you to, to, to comment on. Uh, as scripture opens up in the beginning, mm -hmm. and it says there's darkness, I, I think the word is uh, toho wa boho. That's I think, right, okay? very good. Yeah. And, and that, I, I, how do you translate that? I, I always, when somebody talks to me about it, I would just say, oh, you translate like, you know, it's like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but, formless waste. Well, yeah, we well, that's used, what, that, that's we used right. to translate it. I yeah, know, but yeah. that, uh -huh. I don't think that does it. No, you know? no, this is better. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but then, then it says, uh, you know, uh, uh, in the beginning, and he said, the first day, if I'm yeah, right, yes. let there be light. Yeah. And everybody says, well, that's the, the sun and the moon. And I said, no, no, I think that was the fourth day. So what was that first day? Very good. And Very I, think, good. I think what I'm pulling from you and listening to that was that's the cosmic Christ. The first day is, well, I don't know what words to use, the glory of God breaking in, the, the, the triumph, the whole mm. thing breaking in to, to take away that, <laughs> you uh, know, that's you know, beautiful. that, that yeah. kind of, of, of a notion. Uh. You know, I don't know if you... That's uh, excellent. You know, you know, now we know, here's where science is helping us so much today, that the intuitions that religion always had 
are now being confirmed. If there's one God, there's one truth, there's one reality, religion and science have to be, end up saying the right, same right. thing. And why are you and, afraid of it then? And that's happening now. So what you said about light, light is the only constant in the universe. <laughs> the speed of light is the only constant in the universe. <laughs> And it, I even thought there was light and darkness, which is only from the human perspective. Now we know, and I only learned this from scientists because I wasn't educated scientifically, but what they call neutrinos, billions of neutrinos are passing through what appears to us to be total darkness. So even in darkness there is light, light. just as the prologue to John's Gospel says. So light is everywhere all the time, it might be, I think it is, in fact, another name for spirit. <laughs> yes, it fills everything. And now we know scientifically that's true. When, when you get into the idea of the cosmic Christ, you know, we start to talk to ourselves as a, um, the I. In fact, even when you read the scriptures about, about uh, you know, whether it's the tax collector or the public and pray and and, and, and then the, the whoever else, the Pharisee, whoever it is, it's, it's you know, I don't do these things and yes, I don't do those things. Yes. You know, it, 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 how does the cosmic Christ take away that I and allow us to feel that you know, we're a kingdom of God, so to speak, mm -hmm. we're a people of God, I guess is a better way I would put it. You know, I'm going to go back to that word cosmic allurement if it isn't too big. I think God has to seduce us out of our isolation. Now, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, I don't, the only way a lot of us will move out of our shell, out of our self-enclosed little protective shields, is very often uh, necessary suffering. <laughs> that we'll, we'll keep doing whatever we're doing, almost all of us. We'll stay on the course we're already on until we have to change. Now, that thing that forces us to change, I'm going to just call suffering. Suffering is whenever you're not in control, whenever you're not getting your own way. Whenever. So God has to, to get us to get out of our shell, out of our little self-enclosed boundary. God has to make things not work for us. <laughs> Otherwise, we won't grow. We won't leave. And, and we actually will continue self-destructive behavior. Uh, you've heard the alcoholic speak of you know, uh, doing again and again what doesn't work. We, we all do again and again what doesn't work. So the cosmic Christ, which is the light that fills all things since the beginning of time, I think invites us into bigger worlds by love, by, by something bigger, more beautiful, more attractive, more seductive. And that's what the function of beauty, that's the function of truth, and, and it's the function of all goodness. You know, I bet like you as a priest, I am ashamed to admit it, but I've stood at the altar inside, maybe performing externally correctly, but feeling grumpy or negative inside. And there have been times where oh, we go out to the kiss of peace and one or two sweet people will just smile at you and thank you or hug. And you go back to the altar healed. <laughs> well, you say, where did that grumpiness go? That's the cosmic allurement that, that God uses to constantly pull us outside of our shell. Now, if we resist that, if we don't let the, the hug, the embrace, the love, the smile, the sparkling eyes of another person pull us out, we can remain dead uh, into our later years, I'm afraid. That's our choice, too, isn't yeah, it? But it's our choice, yeah. That's, yeah. that's the scary part in a yeah. way, you know. Yeah. You can choose life or choose death. Yeah. And that's, uh, we would sooner die than change, it seems to me. Yeah. Yeah. And yet, even in our liturgy, uh, it, it, all the time, you know, that doxology, you know, through him, with him, mm. in him. Mm. You know, uh, just if, if we could grasp those kind of you that's know, things that are given yeah. to us all the time. Yeah, through him, with him, in him. There are three prepositions that say... Whatever's happening is happening in a participatory way. You're not doing it. It's being done to you, through you, with you, and I always add, in spite of you. <laughs> but, but your little yes is still important. You yeah. Know? Yeah. But even when you give your little yes, it's, it's always much bigger what's happening to you. Yeah. 
Now, sometimes when we, you know, at least I feel this in these conversations and even my own thoughts, uh, it's not just through, what do I say, through the revelation of the scripture, although it's certainly it's there, there and that's too. there. That was, it's, it's, there. it's there at the center of it for us to, to, to grab. But it's there, in, I'll say, in the, even up as we said before, there's no nature and supernature, but it is there in kind of the natural order of things, isn't it? Like, right. like um, uh, I guess my own background, uh, you know, from the, the Celtic, uh, you know, oh, uh, mentality. Oh. You, you know, that whole notion, uh, and you, I know you did mention it, like the Celtic cross, it's even in the cross, that, that no beginning, no end. And mm -hmm. how, does, how does that, uh, oh. how do you, you see that in so much of your own spirituality and work? At... Uh, this time last month, I was on the island of Iona in Scotland where I learned a lot of this. I was giving them a week-long retreat. And I got to see some of the Celtic crosses from, from 8th, 9th century, still standing. It's sort of unbelievable. But what you note when you look at them, they're all over. You know, They were planted in all holy places. That the body of Jesus is not on the cross. It's very interesting. Usually from top to bottom... They have these carvings of what we would call, we don't know what they called them, we now call them Celtic or knots. They appear to be ropes or, or threads that have no beginning and no end. Always. You see it in Celtic manuscripts, Celtic jewelry, crosses, this, this image of universal connectedness. It's brilliant. And you say, what were their intuitions of reality? that they were able to make everything belong. Everything is part of the mystery. The Celtic knot, for me, really reveals a rather profound spirituality. And the fact that they would cover the cross, both sides, with the same image, you know this was central. And, and also put a circle sometimes very good. You know, at, the, at the very center of that. Yeah, which... yeah, it's all pull it in. Pull it into the one orb the one universe, the word universe, as you know, means turning around one thing. And they had this sense of a united cosmology. We'd now call it ecology. You know, we had to create the word. They had the intuition, and I'd like to believe they had the experience. Now, when we Catholics go to communion, that's the experience we're supposed to have. We're supposed to go to communion. But sometimes we even made communion into a, a reward for good behavior. <laughs> you understand, that just affirms the ego. It doesn't connect you to even the people who maybe aren't in communion. It doesn't teach you how to love your enemies or, or love what Christ loves. And if we don't understand that, I mean, then the, the uh, was it St. Augustine who said something like, receive that which you are. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, that, that's, yeah. uh, that is so profound and so beautiful yes. to think that. You know? and yet, receive the body of Christ so you'll know that you are the body right, of Christ. Right. That's, yeah. You said it the way he said it. You know, and, yeah. and, and then to become that body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. It, 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 how many times, and, and we all do it, even as priests, well, you know, I, I, I don't even like to even think these words, like, well, Mass is over. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I we mean, do. it's over. We you do. Know? Uh -huh. You know, the, uh, uh, and I do know you mentioned, you know, when you talk about the Eucharist and the Cosmic Christ, uh, uh, you, you mentioned, and it's a, it's a, it was a, a, a thought that I've had many times of, uh, of, of Chardin and that universal, mm. uh, the hymn of the universe. Hymn uh, of the universe. You know, uh, can you speak a little bit about that for us? Because yes. it's so, so beautiful. Yeah, I just stopped at his tomb in New York last week because Chardin, who the present Pope has quoted twice in the last year. So uh, people who think maybe his thought is way out, that apparently is not true. He was simply maybe the, the most recent clear speaker of the cosmic Christ. And when he was alone in China on a Sunday morning and as a Jesuit priest found he was in a place where there was neither bread nor wine, he writes this beautiful meditation in Hymn of the Universe where he sees the sun rising over the eastern horizon of China. He sees what he uh, is almost the bend of the earth and he, he takes the physical world as his bread. And he, he imagines all the people who are waking up on that day to suffering, uh, who are being tortured, who are dying, who are unjustly imprisoned, who are in pain. 
and he says, this is the blood of Christ. And he, 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 it's poetically described uh, as I cannot do. But he, this is what he calls his mass over the universe. That he offers God the, the bread of this world, this physical world that God created. And the blood is the suffering of the world. And to accept both the body and the blood is the reality and the suffering of things. And to offer that once again, he says, is to celebrate Mass. That the world itself is the first body of Christ. Now that's clear in the fathers of the church. You know, That's not new thinking. But I must say it was thinking that was largely lost for centuries. We thought Jesus was only in the bread and we forgot that the first body of Christ was creation itself. And again, if people think that's heretical, St. Thomas Aquinas said it. I, he said the primary and essential revelation of the mystery of God is nature, is creation. And when we don't read the first Bible well, unfortunately, we don't read the second Bible very well either. And I think that allows everyone, not just a priest, but everyone to us to take a time of meditation whenever you want to do that and to think of, uh, out of that Chardinian thought, to think of uh, maybe uh, you know, all the work that goes on in our lives and there whatever, whatever, and make there that the go. bread and all the love that mm -hmm. people have touched your life and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you, and we've touched their lives and make that the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the blood of Christ. I mean, it, you, can, you can really see the cosmic Christ in, oh, yeah. in, in, in a way that it just, yeah. it, it's the fabric of our being. Suddenly life is one. And religion and life are the same thing. Who was it saved? Was it Irenaeus mm. who said the glory of man is, uh, the glory of God is the man fully alive, fully alive. or something like yeah, that? Yeah. And that's, that's... Irenaeus uh, understood the cosmic Christ. It's funny you'd mention him. That's right. Yeah. Tell me, I, I know sometimes you talk about like uh, dualistic thinking. Mm -hmm. what, uh, how can that help us to... Well, it can't help us. The dualistic mind uh, divides, everything divides everything up everything. into what it understands and what it doesn't understand. So the goal, which is why I largely teach contemplative prayer, when you get to the contemplative level of life, you don't think dualistically, either or. You almost naturally learn to think both and. Uh, and this is often a gift of the second half of life, where you've suffered enough, loved enough, made enough mistakes, to see that even your good things had some bad parts to it, and even your worst mistakes had some great lessons, that's what begins to teach you non-dual thinking, where you let the whole moment come towards you as it is without dividing the uncomfortable part or separating from the mysterious part. So the goal of, of life is the contemplative mind. And that's, I think, why many people like their grandma and their grandpa more than their parents. Because <laughs> all things being equal, by the time you get to your 60s, and certainly 70s and 80s, that's where you should be. You know, that you see non-dualistically or contemplatively. The sadness is that a lot of people don't get there. That they're more opinionated than ever when they're 75. Where they should be more humble and patient than ever. I'm smiling because you reminded me of a conversation I had with my mother one time when she was older. And it's too long a, a story to get into, but, but, she, but, but I remember she, uh, you know, she, she had that same wisdom you're talking about now as you get oh, older. Wow. And I looked at her and I said, where were you when I was a teenager? <laughs> That's <laughs> I, it. Yeah. I could have used that wisdom back then, I guess. Yeah. So I would have appreciated it. But when it you were time. a teenager, she had five jobs <laughs> no, to do. She, she, she's running around holding it all together. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe she knew I wouldn't, I wouldn't <laughs> trust it. You know, yeah, as, as a beautiful Franciscan priest, which, I, which you are, and I admire uh, you, your brothers and sisters so, so much. And um, so, uh, I, I've done a couple of retreats over in, uh, in Assisi, which were oh, highlights oh, of, of my priesthood even. And yeah. uh, in fact, I did a priest special retreat there. Place, was, oh, it? oh yeah. it is a special place. Yeah. But your motto, my God and everything else, is that, did mm -hmm. I say that correctly? Deus meus et omnia in Latin. My God and everything else. Yeah, and, and omnia. And, mm -hmm. and when we understand that, it, it's, it, it, it allows us it. the whole notion to... That's uh, it. To, yeah. uh, I, I also smile because you, you mentioned in one of your talks uh, about, uh, I think you said three steps forward and two steps backward. Mm -hmm. And the reason I smiled is that we here at, at St. Paul's at our kindergarten graduation, and this has been going on since I've been here for the years, the kids sing that song. 
two steps forward and one step oh, back. Oh, really? There is such a and, song. Wow. And, well, I guess so. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's neat. I'm assuming there is now because they sang it and you mentioned oh, okay. it. okay. And uh, can, you, can you just talk about that a little bit because it's, it's a I, wonderful idea. You know, our fancy theological <clears throat> word for that, as you know, is the Paschal Mystery. It's a term that came from St. Augustine. But uh, it's revealed to us in the death and resurrection of Jesus <laughs> that life is not a straight line. It's a series of losses and gains, and the promise is that the final will be gain, all right? The final will be resurrection. That's our whole, that's the, we call it the mystery of faith. Right. Every time we celebrate Mass, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. But here I'm sad to admit, a lot of us are more Americanized than we are Christianized. The American worldview and the Western worldview would be based what we call the philosophy of progress. Everything's getting better and better and better and better. That just isn't true. It, 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 it gradually is getting better, yes, but you've got to be patient with the constant two steps backward. And the sad part about no. it, if you don't accept that, understand that, boy, then you, then you get bitter. Bitter and, and sometimes mm -hmm. almost say, what well, is it worth living? Is you it know? worth, that's right. You that's know, right. Father Richard, I can't thank you enough for, oh. for your friendship and the love you thank give us. You. And, and, and as a priest, uh, to say thank you for lots and lots oh. of priests who have valued your insight. Boy, bless you. Thank you for always being with us on the Catholic Corner, Father Richard Rohr for his own uh, wonderful gifts. You can get him at his website if you'd like to learn more about his, his process and programs out in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. But let us grow together. Let us be transformed together. Let us always realize that there is growth and we have to be transformed. Bless you. Go God ahead. bless you. this business, it's easy to feel like the low man on the totem pole. Thanks, son. But I'll let you in on a secret. I'm working on my own movie. Coming through. Yeah, that's right. Just in time for this year's Remus Film Festival. A celebration of faith-inspired short films sponsored by the Catholic Diocese of Trenton. First prize was $500. And there's still time for you to enter your short film. For more information, go to RemusFilmFestival.com. Remus Film Festival. See you there. All right, everybody, let's dance.